All right, welcome back to another victory video. We are joined now by Coach Kenny Simpson. Um, Coach, thanks for taking the time again to uh, to join us here for another video. Oh man, I appreciate you having me on and, and what you're doing for the coach community. I think it's pretty cool stuff. So thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, in this video here, we're going to talk about uh, practice scripting, coaches' pods that he's uh, been working with through his practice. Coach is the head coach at. CRC High School in Arkansas. Uh, so, Coach, I'm going to have you share your screen right now. That way you can walk us through. That way I don't have to quarterback anything. Uh, you can okay. take full control of it. And we can get through this uh, practice schedule, these pods, and uh, the way we can match up our offense together once we're done. So, uh, Coach, I'll hand the reins over to you. All right, Coach, man, I, I appreciate you having me on. And one of the things I've been getting hit up a lot on uh, in my email and Twitter and different places, and I think a lot of things that most coaches – that either we're in the off season, you know, working towards next year, or some of you guys might be playing in the spring, but every coach wants to know how to maximize his practice time. It's something that every weekend I'm trying to figure out different ways to get more time for our practices and figure out ways to maximize what we're doing. Uh, and I, I made a change for those of you who may not know me. I went from a four a school to a six a school. And one of the biggest differences when you do that is you go from having multiple two-way players to maybe very, very few two-way players. So it makes you even then rethink how you want to practice. And so, uh, but I think what I'm going to talk about today is one of the things that we do a little bit unique uh, from a lot of coaches. So I'm not going to go through every part of our practice schedule here, but I do want to kind of give a general overview of some of the things we do that probably everybody is very, very similar to, uh, and then get into our pod system. That's something that's been I get a lot of uh, people asking me about doing that because it is unique. And so I'll kind of kind of walk through that. So basically, the way we organize practice is like every team in America. You know, we're going to have however many periods we have over here on the left. Usually for us, those periods are going to be five minute periods. Um, if I do a good job, I've got a timer on them that keeps me going. You know, if not, you know, they you know, we, I try to be my own timer, depending at the school that I'm at. And we're like most schools, we're usually going to start off with some type of specialty, or if they're not doing specialty up here in period one, this is actually an older practice schedule. You know, we'll go to steal time there. So we may take our offensive linemen there. You can kind of see here, and we're going to steal some time with them, uh, or we're going to steal some time with our quarterbacks, or steal some time with our defensive guys that are not involved as like a snapper or holder or kicker or punter. Because the goal of every coach, I think, is to keep every kid active. Uh, active kids usually are going to give you – they're going to be engaged, and they're not going to be problems, and they're going to learn, and that's the goal of practice. Okay, um, Then we're like everybody else. We usually will come to some type of individual time. And you can kind of see across the top here, I've got mine there, and you can do yours however you want to. But one of the things we got unique with is we started recognizing that uh, if you're like me – um, you don't have enough coaches for what you need. You know, I've been at a 4A school and now I'm at a 6A school, but on both of them, I don't have as many coaches I would like to have because I don't live in the great state of Texas where they just let you hire a gazillion guys. And so, you know, we've got to figure out ways to make sure that we're coaching our kids. And one of the problems you run into, if you have one coach doing the, like the offensive line right here, especially in our offensive system, is they don't all perform the same blocks. You know, and so there's times when your guards are working, maybe a block they're never going to use in a game. So it kind of got us thinking, how are we going to how are we going to maximize our time? So we started slowly pulling different positions and putting them together with other positions. Like on this practice schedule, we put our quarterbacks they are going to work the reads on a buck with our running backs. And then we're going to bring our guards over there with them. OK, and so I've actually I think if I can make this work. Okay, have a little bit, that's not it, have a little bit of film I can pull up that kind of shows you. So we came up with, you know, what a lot of people know us for is kind of the hurdle drill. So we brought our quarterbacks. Can we see this, I'm hoping? Mr. Yes. Yep. Perfect, okay. So we brought our quarterbacks here with our running backs, and then we have our guards here. So our guards are going to work buck, quarterback. Uh, right now we're early in the year, so or actually we're late in the year, so we didn't have a read for him, but a lot of times we'll offer a read for the quarterback. And then we have our running backs kind of going through what they're doing. So I'll just let it play. You can kind of see we're working buck blocking. Quarterbacks are working. Guards are working. And while all this is going on, we have other people working different things. So uh, really quickly, because I know people like this drill, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. Uh, this is probably the drill. 
a lot of people started reaching out to me on. This is our hurdle drill. So, you know, when you're a, a smaller school in Arkansas, you build stuff instead of buy stuff. So we built our own hurdles, call them buck hurdles. And I brought that with me to Searcy because you can use their kind of multi-purpose deals. We're going to work buck sweep. So this is early install. You can tell by the fact that I'm wearing blue jeans, not professionally dressed right there. This is early uh, kind of, we had just got done with the workout. Hey, let's go get a extra time in here. So we're working our guards, our pulling. Okay. Our quarterback is here. Our running back is here. working buck sweep drill. And so this is a drill we would call a pod drill. Okay. You can see by the way there, that's one thing we added to our buck drill was the, the towel to make our running back really focus. Here's our quarterback carrying out the fake. Okay. And while that is going on, we have other stuff going on. So you pull up uh, this year's film for us. Um, you know, we have multiple groupings working because now I'm at a bigger school. So, you know, more guys, so you got to keep them all going. So right here, we're actually working a different pull. So this is our counter. So this is a guard. We brought our guard, our tight end and our wing together with our quarterback and running back. So there's five guys here that are working this. These linemen here are not going to pull kick. They're not going to pull wrap. You can tell, look at them. These guys are probably not pullers for us. So they're over here working whatever block our offensive line coach wants to work. So he has given me his guard. Okay. Our wing back tight end coach has given me his wing back and tight end. And that's me. Okay. Working our counter game over here. Our coach is taking our receivers. Of course, we can do different groupings there. That might be other wings that aren't going to run counter. They're over here as well. They're working some type of blocking drill. So you can kind of see, and I just kind of picked a random clip there. We want to make sure we're maximizing our time. So instead of having these guys walk through here, and you can see they're working a pass pro here and a new center is working, uh, you know, we're not having seven guys stand here and watch four guys work. That was hey, coach, yeah, that's that's the big point of these pods, correct? Is to make sure you maximize as much time as possible, but also you don't have kids that you know. If you're if you're in a run period, you don't have wide receivers essentially standing around stocking up a bag a hundred times where they could be more productive, maybe with a little bit more individual uh, and individual period. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that's exactly why we do that. I mean, we don't want we want to make sure every kid we have has the opportunity to be active. You know, and not always the case, but it. You know, it is something we try to do often. You can kind of – it will rotate drills. Like here's – okay, so now I'm going back. This is our guards. So this is the same practice, okay? Here's our guards. They're with me. Our O-line is down here working down blocks, cut blocks, first level. You can barely see him over here in the right, but that's our wing backs and tight ends working down block for Buck. So instead of us working Buck as a team, one guy coaching and 11 guys watching, I'm trying to maximize my coaches. So I've got four of us on offense. Well, three coaches, I need to use those guys. So we're going to put in the RPO or the pass play here with the receivers. We're putting in the quarterback read with Buck. We're working down block. That's a big part of Buck. And we're over here working our down block with our tight end and our wing. You can kind of see how everybody's being active here. Everybody's got something to do. So you have very few guys doing nothing. Okay, and that was kind of the goal of what we went to with pods. And like you mentioned, it's twofold. One, it keeps the kids active. Okay, uh, but two, it also keeps uh, it also maximizes not having enough coaches. So you can kind of see up here. I got five positions. Well, this year on offense, I had three coaches. So we can't fill all of these. So how are we going to make that happen? And I'm going to go ahead and stop my presenting and just kind of talk if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so how are we going to make that happen? Well, what we're going to do is I've got a coach, my receiver coach is going to handle all spatial blocks. So if we've got a run, uh, you know, we've got a lineman working screen blocking out there in space or even hook blocking. We're going to run jet sweep and we're trying to hook guys. That guy has a lot more experience working with that. And so they're going to go with him to work those blocks or go with me to work those blocks with the running backs. If our backs are working blitz pickup well they're going to go with the o-line coach because that guy knows what he's doing there or they're working lead blocking on whatever we're running they're going to go with the o-line coach you know and so it's a way to kind of your coaches now can teach the skill they're strong at so in our offense if you coach the wing back he's got a block he's got a catch and he's got a run well unless you hire like an h back out of the nfl no coach is an expert at all that stuff yeah. so 
And now it lets me tell you, hey, all right, that you're going to go work on down blocking for Buck. Go over there with the tight end coach if you're the wing back. You're going to work on ball security. Go over there with the quarterbacks and running backs. You're going to work on catching. Go over there with the receivers. It takes some creativity, but it allows you to maximize your coaches. And now we'll flip it and do the same thing on defense. So a couple of examples of that might be everyone does like an inside period. That's normal. But what about doing outside backers working with DBs on out on screens? That's somewhat normal too. Well, there's times we'll take our safeties or our run fitters and put them with our inside linebacker coach to work on the angle of how they're fitting. So now again, you're coaching your kids. The coach is comfortable with them. What I don't like to see is 35 kids lined up and one coach talking. And I think that's kind of the goal of every coach. So yeah. Now, coach, can you talk a little bit about uh, just how you would game plan as a staff? So once let's say the week begins, you have your first uh, day to get ready with the staff. How are you breaking this up? Are you saying, all right, you're going to coach this this week? Or like that one coach is automatically segmented to coach this thing for this entire week? Or how do you go about doing that? A lot of times I'll ask my O-line coach because usually like this year, my O-line coach and I basically handled linemen. So if they were going to go do something where we split, I took and I said, "You, who do you want to work with? What do you think is most important? You're the line coach. Are we doing well at pulling? If we're not, you go with them and I'll take the other guys, you know. And so it's usually done on a Sunday. You know, for us, we break down our weekend duties and kind of go through all that stuff. Well, part of that is I need to know how much time you need for whatever skills you need to go through. And that's a lot of conversations that have to happen. But, you know, like if we're playing a heavy run team, you know, our safeties may go with our linebackers that week. Heavy pass team, our outside backers may go with the DB coach, you know. And so it's just how how are we going to divide that up? It is a week by week thing, uh, but usually it's a skill by skill. uh, And it's coaches that have to collaborate and have to work together. That's the part that some coaches aren't as good at. Uh, you've got to really make sure you're on the same page, but it should force you as a staff to be one cohesive unit. Yeah, I, the reason I love I like the pod so much is because you look at it from a coaching perspective, not necessarily a player perspective. I think a lot of coaches get caught up into that where it's like, all right, you just take the wide receivers over there, you take the running backs over there. Well, you're not, you know, like you said, most I, I coach at a small school, right? Coaches are uh, a valuable asset to have on your staff. So if you have coaches that can do certain things you know, to your advantage, let's take advantage of that. Right. Uh, or to your liking, let's take advantage of that because it's, you don't want guys sitting around, like you said, in all those videos you had, I, I counted three deep, maybe. Right. So that means yeah. more rest of the kids are not sitting around doing nothing. Uh, right. So right. And, we, and going from a four to a six, a, you see that more. I think it was more important for us to do it at a four a school because you had so many kids going both ways. Your time was so constrained, you know, as you're, as I move, have moved up, you know, I get I get those kids for an hour and a half. They just play offense. So you have more time. But if you're at a small school, man, it's super valuable to, because now you may only get 20 minutes worth of indie and group. Well, you better shove it all into that. You know? Yeah, and that was my next question I was going to ask you is what are these – times segmented into um you know do you do uh and talk about both both your experiences at the 4a and the 6a like how you scheduled both practices was it shorter periods longer periods um you know i'll let you take the floor from there yeah no well usually you know we're going to start off the same you're going to start with whatever individual you're wanting to get and and that generally will start them you know quarterbacks that might just be like routes on air pop whatever you want to call that you know they're getting their arm loose we're working short routes that's a natural fit you know uh, but then we're going to go, I usually try to go about 15 minutes worth of individual where they're really working with their position coach. And at that point, we'll start playing around with, are we going to do pods? This is a 6A school. This is kind of a bit of one-way players pretty much. So around that point, we're going to say, what are we focusing on this week? We focus on or this day, you know, and, and that's when I'm going to work the focus. During team, we're working situations. So I don't have time to run through buck sweep and counter and this all in team. We're going to get that inside of our pod work. And so if we're working buck, we kind of have, these are the four pods we go to and we hit it, come back together. Then we're going to do an inside drill period uh, and then a seven on seven period. And so usually for, and then team at the end, anytime we do team, I try to build towards game situations. So seven on seven, we're going to move hashes, mm-hmm. you know, a uh, team, we're going to do everything's down a distance. Everything's time everything is a game thing and then the biggest thing when you go one way is you can build in those one-on-ones we can start practice with it you can do it in the middle when it's kind of lull, or you mm-hmm. can do it at the end so you can build those periods and i'll do that with situations like we'll work 
uh, you know, last the end, near the end of the year, we started working third down one on one. So we go third and one, third and two, third and, and then we'll do some red zone as well. So that's six A. Go to four A. The problem you run into is you now have to get that same practice in, and you have to split those kids half. And so now you're talking about maybe 20 minutes worth of indie slash pod time because then they got to go over to defense and do it. And then seven on seven inside drill, we would basically just rotate days. So offense might get inside drill on Monday, defense gets it on Tuesday, maybe we split Wednesday, however you're going to do that, just by priority. So it makes you think a lot more, uh, not to say that it's easier because it's not. I mean, every level of football has its challenges. But organizing practice is much more difficult at a smaller school with multiple two-way players. All right, this has been great, Coach. Uh, anything else you want to add uh, to this as we're about to sign off? No, man, I, I appreciate you having me on. And, and uh, you know, hopefully you guys that are listening, you don't have to run the shotgun wing tee to run this stuff. This is basically just how to organize a practice. And hopefully you can take it for whatever you want to run. Uh, you can follow Coach at FB Coach Simpson. Uh, my name is Coach Chris Haddad. Coach, thanks again. And we'll see you guys next time. I appreciate it.